Hello guys, it's me, Cheeky Spice. Today I'm bringing you a guide for this completely insane chase build. Shout out to the whelps who actually created this build. I want to give you guys a in-depth look into how to set up this build and how to play it, as well as talking about its strengths and its weaknesses. This is going to be a hybrid between bruiser and assassin. You'll be quite squishy, but deal really good damage with amazing chase potential. This is one of the most fun builds that I've ever played. So let's get into it. So for the build, we're going to go with reverse stab, leaping strike and shield bash. The reverse stab is going to be your big damage. We're going to upgrade that into unstoppable stab, which is going to give you grit and then upgrade it again to Tactician, which is going to reduce the cooldown on a successful hit by 25%. Next up, we're going to get Precision, which is going to give you 10% more critical strike chance, and then Opportunist, which deals 10% more damage to slowed foes. Confidence, while health is full, going to deal 15% more damage. Achilles Heal, the final attack in your light attack chain, is going to inflict a 20% slow for 2 seconds. Then we got the Leaping Strike, this is going to be your mobility option. Final Strike, if you hit a foe below 30% health, deal 50% more damage, that one is really good. And then Cowardly Punishment, on successful hit, inflict a 30% slow for 3 seconds. Then we're going to get Critical Precision, on Critical gain 20% haste for 5 seconds. And then we're going to choose Leadership for that 10% increased damage. Next up we got the shield bash. This is going to be your stun. We're going to upgrade this so we can get to the next one which is going to increase your stun duration by one second. Then we're going to get elemental resistance to reduce the damage from all magical types. Then get sturdy shield which grants you an additional 15% physical armor. Then invigorated bulwark which uh, gain 15 stamina on a shield bash. And then we're going to get the recuperation which uh, increases all incoming healing effects by 10%. That's going to be huge. Now, now let's move over to the Great Axe. Here we're going to go with the Reap, Charge and Whirlwind. So we're going to start off by upgrading the Reap so that the range is increased to 8 meters. Then we're going to get Hunger which heals yourself for 30% of the damage done by the Reap. Then Fatal Retraction, after pulling you perform a follow up move which deals 115% weapon damage. Next up we got the Charge. We're gonna upgrade this one to Frenzied Momentum. Charge now deals 120 to 140 weapon damage based on how far you travel. And then we're gonna get Unpredictable Strike, which lets you uh, cancel the charge at any time with a follow up attack. Then we're gonna get Greed Light Attacks with the Great Axe, give you a stack of 5% damage for 5 seconds, which stacks 3 times. Then we're gonna get Critical Gains so when you critical hit with the Great Axe, heal yourself for 10% of the damage done. And then Keen Edge, which increases the damage of your critical hits. Then we're going to get Feed, Great Axe attacks against foes below 30% heal you for 10% of the damage you deal. Then Critical Condition attacks against foes below 30% health give you 15% increased critical chance. And then of course Bloodlust which gives you a 20% movement buff and a 15% damage buff as long as you're looking at an enemy and uh, you're within 14 meters. And we're going to get Mauler's Resolve. If you get hit while holding a Great Axe and are below 50% health you're going to gain 40 stamina. Now over to the Whirlwind, we're going to upgrade this one to Unending Winds, which increases the amount of spins to 7. Then we're going to get Gusting Winds, which increases the movement speed by 100% while it's active. Then Surrounded, if you have 3 or more foes around you, you deal 30% more damage. And then Center of Attention, while holding the Great Axe, you gain a 10% damage buff when 3 or more enemies are within 4 meters range. So, for the Attributes, it's uh, really simple, we're gonna go 200 constitution, 300 strength. However you wanna do that with the uh, attribution food is up to you. I'm using the 40 constitution food. So I go 160 constitution and 300 plus strength. All right, so let's talk about my gear. Now my gear is not optimized since I'm still experimenting a lot with the uh, perks, but for my gear right now, I'm using 3 times Shirking Fortification and 5 times Resilient. So on my helmet, I have Shirking Fort and Resilient. On my chest piece, I have 1 Freedom and Resilient. On my gloves, I have Shirking Fortification and Resilient. On my legs, I have Shirking Energy and Resilient. And on my boots, I have Shirking Fortification and Resilient. So 3 Shirking Fortification, 5 Resilient, 1 Shirking Energy, and 1 Freedom. 
Uh, I am kind of undecided right now on whether or not I like freedom more than I do shirking fortification. I might try to actually run 5 freedom if it's possible, because uh, with this build one of your biggest uh, uh, challenges is going to be somebody with a repair. A lot of your attacks are telegraphed and a good repair player is going to get you stunned a lot. So either you get good at avoiding that stun or you can get 5 freedom and that stun is not going to be so bad. But uh, one freedom at least is gonna let you escape like something like the follow-up attack from a shockwave uh, and stuff like this. So I think at least one freedom should, uh, should be in your kit. For my shield, I'm using Keen, Sure Footing and Keenly Empowered. Sure Footing is not that great. I wish I would have Vicious instead. So you can have Keen, Vicious and Keenly Empowered is gonna be the best option. And then for my axe, I got uh, Plague Strikes and Thwarting Strikes. It's nothing special at all. I'm just kind of trying to get a better axe right now. But the Plague Strikes actually have been useful in certain situations. Especially in like group fights, I can just heavy attack to get that uh, reduced in uh, healing effect. So I can kind of battle them better, especially when I'm fighting somebody who uh, doesn't have a healer but only using potions. And Twirling Strikes is always going to be good for the Axe. But the Axe is not my main weapon that I use. It's more utility than actual damage. The sword is where my main damage comes from. And here you have the Sword of the Champion. This is from the PvP track. And I think this is going to be the best sword that you can get for this build. You got the Penetrating Backstab, which gives you 20% uh, armor penetration. Then you have Vicious, which increases your critical damage. And then Keenly Empowered. So you get Empower on crits. So for my jewelry, uh, I'll show you the ring first because you want to have keen awareness. It increases your critical chance. That means you're going to have more uptime, uptime on the keenly empowered. And I also have the hardy so that you have more stamina. That one is just really nice always. It lets you double, watch, uh, double dodge when you're in light armor. Uh, and then I, I run leeching. I just like to get that little bit of uh, health on my attacks. With the sword you attack quite fast as well, so I just I feel like leeching is not that bad, but it's probably not the best perk. Um, for my amulet, it's kind of random. Uh, this is actually my PvE amulet usually, which is why it's upgraded to 625. But it does have divine and health, uh, divine and health, which are the must-have perks in my opinion. I can't live without divine and health. But the shirking dot cleanse, it's probably not the best one. If you can get something like shirking and power or something, that's probably going to be better. But shirking dot cleanse, uh, it it can be useful sometimes. <laughs> It doesn't hurt to have it. As long as you have Divine and Health, that is uh, the most important for me at least. And for my earring, I have Healthy Toast and Refreshing Toast. Healthy Toast lets you heal by using a Mana Potion, which lets you have three health potions. It's uh, a must-have perk for my case. And then Refreshing Toast, which reduces the cooldown of your potions. <clears throat> so. One thing you have to be aware of with this build is that you're running 5 pieces of light armor. Uh, if you put on a medium chest, you're gonna be medium. So the only way to dodge roll with a shield is by using 5 pieces of light armor. So you are gonna be quite squishy and that's why I'm running fortification, shirking fortification. Um, but I feel like it still doesn't make that big of a difference so I might just wanna get freedom instead. But I'm still experimenting with that a lot, so we will see what I end up with. One of the perks that I'm currently missing is the Empowering Leaping Strike, which uh, increases the damage you deal uh, to targets slowed by your Leaping Strike. I just haven't found a piece with the right uh, attributes uh, with that perk yet, so that is one must-have perk for this build, I would say. But I don't use it and I still find this build to be extremely good. So you don't have to have any of the weapon perks and this build is still going to be great. But if you can get the weapon perks and still the other essential armor perks, then you're just going to be even stronger. So uh, Empowered Leaping Strike is definitely one of those perks that I really wish that I had. And for my gems, I'm just running 10% uh, damage on both, so Onyx and Oboe 50-50. Uh, a lot of people use the, the int gems in their weapons, and uh, there's a lot of mages also out there these days. 
So when I tried to run only physical, then I was just getting melted by all of the mages and stuff like this. And uh, like I said, a lot of the people have in, in, in gems in their armor, so they, they're going to deal a lot of damage to you. So I still just run half and half. Alright, so let me tell you just about the basics of uh, how to play this build. Obviously, this is a build uh, best used with a rotation. So I'm going to run over here to this uh, guy right now. What you want to do is you start off by a leaping strike because you deal extra damage to slowed foes So he's gonna have a slow on him then you stun him go behind and do a reverse stab for a lot of damage Now I have the pvp backstab so that's gonna deal more damage to a actual player But you can see also the leaping strike It deals a lot of damage Even more so when you have the empower up and the shield bash doesn't deal that much damage but it is something and then you quickly go behind and do the the backstab the reverse stab so that's going to be the main part of your rotation right there another thing is your light attacks you want to spam three light attacks like that now he's slowed for two seconds as we can see in my perk there he has to slow for two seconds only though so you keep spamming them with that and then pretty much nobody can get away from you as long as you get that last hit that's been there at the end that's gonna apply a slow all right so let's take a look at some uh, combat footage with this build you want to play with your team that's when you're going to be the most effective if you have a healer you can be super aggressive just uh, constantly trying to put pressure on the enemy looking for weak targets that i can take down you see here I have the sacred ground, I can just walk around these guys and survive. Just looking for openings and ways to attack. This guy got hit with some nasty damage, I'm gonna stay on this guy. Keep hitting him with the light attack chain to keep him slowed. Unfortunately I reaped the wrong guy, but I finish him with a charge. Then we go right back into this group right here, pop the whirlwind, just pop tons of damage, dodge that shockwave. Unfortunately we got hit with the mighty gravel, but still. Or I think that was the Wrecking Ball, sorry. But yeah, we just keep being aggressive, just keep attacking, doing what we can to dish out uh, damage as well as CC with the slows and the staggers and stuns. And we're just pushing them back. Here I'm playing with the team. Of course, a lot of the credit goes to my team as well, but you can be just super aggressive. And, uh, you know, I'm not afraid to jump into the enemy either. Here I get the root, so I pop my Whirlwind just to be a little bit scary while I'm rooted grab that guy with the reap from miles away and then we spot a healer stay on him keep him slowed and cc'd and just put pressure on him forcing him to kind of run away and be a little bit scared of the fight you know you're not always gonna kill healers but you gotta occupy them gotta keep them busy just stay on that guy i don't want him to survive he did a clap so he narrowly escapes but i think something yeah there he goes down and we're just kind of zooming around you see we're flying across the battlefield back and forth with the leaping strike and the charge so much mobility and of course the light armor dodge just keep hitting people make them slow walk doing what we can applying damage you can just be so damn aggressive with this build it's so much fun leaping strikes and that guy get him with some slows then the team brings him down you're just kind of flying around and since you have so much freedom, like a whirlwind, don't sleep on the whirlwind because it gives you 100% movement speed. It gets you out of CC. You can pop it for mobility, utility or damage. It's, it's so good. You can keep applying damage to somebody while walking at 100% movement speed, you know? As a melee, you can't do that otherwise because each... Uh, each move locks you into animation. See here, I was about to die and I... I just keep surviving. I think now I'm gonna be brought down. There we do bring down the healer. Yeah, there he goes. And now I'm gonna get hit with a nasty backstab there with the hatchet. Gotta watch out for hatchets with the rogue uh, perk. <laughs> they, hurt, they hurt a lot. But yeah, so you can see this build is incredible. It's so much fun, especially when you play in a team. Uh, the weaknesses of this build is of course gonna be solo play or 1bx, especially against uh, a bunch of ranged then you're going to be in a struggle for sure. But in group fights like this, it's so good. It's so good. 
and you have so much mobility like i said you you can always get out of a fight if you need to dip so the way that i play this build is that i just kind of weave in and out i try not to have the main aggro of people and sometimes i also play it in a disruptor type way so you kind of just jump in there and make the enemy kind of I don't know, uh, scatter a little bit because they're probably not going to bring you down anyway. But it kind of lets your team, uh, it open up a lot of opportunities for your team if you jump into their crowd and kind of do your thing and then you dip out of there again. Kind of screw up their uh, attention a little bit. As you see here too, I'm just like weaving in and out doing some damage and then I go back again when I notice I'm taking too much damage from people. There you see in a uh, emergency you can use your shield for blocking. Obviously with a round shield you're not gonna want to block a lot. Uh, you have your dodge for that but sometimes you're rooted and you're getting hit by muskets then the shield is a uh, effective tool. There was just way too much damage and I was too deep. I didn't notice that my team had fallen back so then you're gonna go down. You're super squishy, don't forget that. So just play to your strengths and uh, remember your weaknesses. So hopefully this video is helpful to you guys. I hope you have a lot of fun using this build. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll answer them. And uh, if you did find this helpful or useful at all, then I would greatly appreciate it if you could take a second to hit like on the video and super appreciate it if you want to subscribe. And to all of my new subscribers, I just want to say thank you and welcome. I'm going to keep uploading videos, so stay tuned for more. I got some other exciting builds coming up and also some really cool greatsword builds. So thank you so much for watching and as always, have a nice day. A peace.